Section 6.8 is about complex numbers, which we have seen before. They showed up in Chapter 7 that we did right after we did Chapter 4, and we did get some answers where we had eyes in there, and when you get the eyes showing up, you're talking about complex numbers. So there are going to be some things in this section that overlap with some of the stuff we've done already, but there are also going to be some things in this section that don't. So I guess first of all, um, the definitions at the beginning, they kind of do. Right, the, the biggest thing that you notice with complex numbers is the imaginary component because you don't have that with real numbers, right? The I. Um, so the imaginary unit, which is I, um, it's the number where when you square it, you get negative one. So you could look at it this way, which is sometimes the way that we have to use it, or you could look at it this way. That I would be the square root of negative one. Um, the i being equal to the square root of negative 1 is what we're going to have to use toward the beginning of this section. But then the things toward the back end, you get a ton of i squareds in there. And so then whenever you see it, you end up going, uh-huh, i squared, that's negative 1. So you kind of end up using both. Um, so a complex number generally would be the form a plus bi, where you would have a real component and an imaginary component, where the part that has the i in it is the imaginary component. Um, but uh, by definition, that would actually make all real numbers complex numbers, because if b is 0, you just get a real number, right? Then you don't have that imaginary component written in there if you have 0i. So that is technically true, even though usually we don't say it that way. Um, and then the other way around, if a is 0, you would have something that looks like a complex number because it would have an i in it, but you would have a pure imaginary number where it's just got the one term, where it's just like 3i or negative 6i or radical 17i or something like that, right? That's just a pure imaginary number. All right, then the last thing up toward the top, if n is a positive real number, so if n is positive, that makes negative n a negative number, then if you took the square root of negative n, then the principal square root ends up being negative n times i. So the important thing here, I guess, is getting from there down to there. So what we're doing here generally, this is basically what happens on the rest of this page with the, the concrete examples that show up later. You can rewrite negative n as n times negative one because then you can break up that um, square root of a product into a product of square roots. And then you can say, well, then that's equal to the square root of n times the square root of negative one. And we can say, but the square root of negative one is i. So that's a way to kind of simplify out the, the i part of it. And then if there's anything you can do with the radical, then you would do it, right? Like if it's a square root and you've got you know, a number that has a perfect square as a factor, then you can deal with that and simplify it down. But sometimes you do, sometimes you don't as far as that goes. Okay, the concrete examples that are here, um, basically we're just going to do that move over and over again. That's kind of what this boils down to. So that square root of negative 25, what I would do with that before anything else is just rewrite this as the square root of 25 times negative 1. Or I guess if you want, you could jump to this step and say it'll be the square root of 25 times the square root of negative 1 because the square root of negative 1 is going to be i. And the square root of 25, well, 25 is a perfect square. That's 5 squared, so we'd end up with 5 times i. And then that's basically what happens. Um, and actually, I want to write that with like an intermediate step, sort of. Um, so 5 times i. So I think that looks a little more descriptive, right? The square root of 25 becomes the 5. The square root of negative 1 becomes the i. Um, but then usually you would write it without that multiplication dot. There, that looks better. All right, number 2. If we do the same thing and say, well, this will be the square root of 2 times the square root of negative 1, then the square root of negative 1 is i. So this would just be radical 2 times i. Can't really do anything with that radical 2, right? I mean, there's no perfect square that's going to divide that except for 1, which doesn't help. One thing I do want to mention here, um, with number 2, like when you just end up with a pure imaginary number um, where it's an i multiplied by some root, some people write it like that, um, and some people write it with the i out front. So this can also be written as i 
radical too. And it just sort of depends, I think, on which way you saw it first. So like the first time that you ever saw a complex number, whichever way it was written then is kind of the one that sticks in your head. And for me, it's the one where you put the I on the right side, but I understand putting the I on the left. Because when you put the I on the right, you have to be careful with how you draw your radical. Because you don't want to draw the radical so the top part's too long and then ends up covering the eye where then it looks like the eye is under the square root when that's not really what's going on, right? So you got to be careful. Um, and then if you put the eye out front, then you don't have to worry about it, right? Like that's never going to be ambiguous. Um, it's pretty clear when the eye is out front that it's not under the square root. Um, but I mean, I guess the advantage of putting the eye on the right side is that then um, the imaginary components all look uniform, right? Where the eye, if it's there, is always on the right. So maybe if you're, if you're looking for that, then you can spot it easier. So it's just kind of a personal preference thing, and I think it is just whichever way you learned it first, that's the way that you do it. It's, it's just one of those things. Um, and um, I guess I should mention that our book writes it with the eye on the right side. Um, so presumably, like with the homework, that's probably how they would want it there as well. But then the 151 book actually does it the other way. The 151 book has the I in front of the radical, despite being from the same publisher and everything. So, right, I mean, it, either one's fine ultimately, right? It is multiplication. So when you're multiplying, you can flip the order if you want to. Um, but, you know, whichever one, I guess whichever one feels natural, that's the one you should do. Um, and maybe on the homework, um, you might have to put it on the right, but on the test, like on the comprehensive exam, where they're, when you have to submit work, if you wrote it the other way around, um, you know, like, I'll catch it on your work. And I'll just be like, oh, yeah, that's the same thing as this. So I guess on something like that, you wouldn't have to worry about it. But on the homework, if you do everything right, but you put the I on the left and it doesn't like it, then just put the I on the right. You might have to do it there. All right, three... Let's see. Start off doing the same thing. So square root of 48 times the square root of negative 1. And we know that square root of negative 1 is going to be i. But also, we can do things with that square root of 48 because uh, there are a couple of perfect squares that divide 48. 4 will divide 48, but so will 16, and that's actually better. Because then we can do the whole thing all in one shot. So I'm going to rewrite the square root of 48 as the square root of 16 times the square root of 3, and then I guess for now I'll just write the square root of negative 1, even though it's going to turn into an i. Because here we can say the square root of 16 is a 4, um, the square root of 3 is still just the square root of 3, and then the square root of negative 1 is i. So 4 times radical 3 times i, or 4 radical 3i, or 4i radical 3, if you want to put the i in front of the radical. Um, number 4 I guess the only thing with number four that's different is that negative out front. So just don't forget that it's there. Just sort of carry it all the way through. And I think that's the best way of handling that. So I'm going to have negative radical 60 times square root of negative 1. And we know the square root of negative 1 is going to be i. The square root of 60, we can break that down because 4 divides 60. So we could write this as the negation of the square root of 4 times the square root of 15, and then times the square root of negative 1. And then, all right, negative 2 times radical 15 times i, or just rewriting it without the multiplication dots, negative 2 radical 15i, or negative 2i radical 15, if you want to go that way. Um, so just watch out for the negative out front. I guess that's the moral of the story with number 4. All right, moving up a little bit to simplification that's a little more involved because we're not just going to get pure imaginary numbers now. We're going to get some other stuff, right? With three and, or with five and six, I guess I looked at the first number in, in, in five there for a second, but with five and six, um, you get full-fledged complex numbers with a real part and an imaginary part. Um, and then, you, yeah, the same thing will happen in seven and eight. Um, it's just they look a little bit different um, because that division's in there. All right, so number five. I would say just do what we've been doing, pretty much. And I would say that that's going to be, so 3 minus the square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1. So the same first step. You get a negative square root 
first thing I would do is go, all right, I'm going to write that as a product of the positive square root and then the square root of negative one, because then I know where the I is and I can go from there. Um, and then the square root of 16 is four. So this is going to be three minus four times I, or just rewriting it without the multiplication dot three minus four I. All right. Next one, playing the same game. You know what we're going to do with that square root of negative 12. You know exactly what we're going to do with it. So 5 plus the square root of 12 times the square root of negative 1, right? Get that square root of negative 1 out of there, and we can say that's our i. Um, the square root of 12, you could simplify a little bit because 4 divides that. So we could write this as 5 plus the square root of 4 times the square root of 3 times, well, I guess I might as well just rewrite that as an i. And then the square root of 4 is 2, so this will be 5 plus 2 times radical 3 times i, or just rewriting it without the multiplication dots, 5 plus 2 radical 3 i. Okay, then 7 and 8, uh, kind of a different look because we got that division in there, but still, you look at 7 and 8, first thing that jumps out, you got a negative underneath the radical. You know what we do with those. So if I rewrite 7, I'll have 15 plus the square root of 18 times the square root of negative 1 over 3. And then the square root of 18, um, 9 divides 18, and 9 is a perfect square, so that's how I would break that up and say this will be 15 plus the square root of 9 times the square root of 2 times i, since that's what the square root of negative 1 is going to be. Now we're going to divide that all by 3 still. All right, um, the square root of 9 is 3. Right, so we can say on top that's going to be 15 plus 3 radical 2i, and we're still dividing by 3. You can simplify this a little bit, and with this one you have two options. You could factor a 3 out of the numerator, since 15 and 3 are both divisible by 3, that would work. And then you could cancel that through the one in the denominator. In general, I don't know if that's the best option. Um, that happens to work well here but that move would not work quite as well in number eight. So what I would do instead, I think, is just break this into real and imaginary parts now and say that we could rewrite this as 15 over three plus three radical two i over three. And then you could say, well, 15 over three, that's five. And then in the imaginary part, those threes can cancel out and you would just end up with radical two times i and that would be the answer. And that's the exact same thing you would get if you factored a three out of the numerator and then canceled that through the one on the bottom. All right, eight, similar idea. So eight minus the square root of 700 times the square root of negative one all over 10. And you know what we're going to do with that square root of 700? Because the perfect square that divides 700 is, I think, kind of an easy one to catch. Right? It's going to be 100. Um, and kind of one of the most distinctive perfect squares, I guess. So we'd have 8 minus the square root of 100 times the square root of 7, and then times the square root of negative 1. And this is all over 10. But the square root of 100 is 10, and then the square root of negative 1 is i. So we'll have 8 minus 10 radical 7i over 10. And then here, if we break this up into real and imaginary parts right now, we'll have 8 tenths minus 10 radical 7i over 10. The 8 tenths would reduce to 4 fifths. But then... In the imaginary part, those tens are going to cancel, so you just get minus radical 7 times i, like so. All right, so I think that takes care of all of the simplification stuff. Um, the other things that we're going to cover in this section is multiplying and dividing. That's where you see the i squareds. So multiplying two complex numbers together, um, it's a lot like multiplying polynomials. Um, or multiplying um, just expressions with radicals, right? When, when that showed up a couple sections ago. Um, 
because if you look at what's going on, on that first bullet point, when you multiply a pure imaginary number by a two term one, use the distributive property. So a pure imaginary number, um, this would be one of the form b times i, right? Where it's just the one term, just the imaginary part. So yeah, you would distribute that and that's what nine and 10 are. So like you can see the problems for nine and 10, that's what those are and that's what we're gonna do there. We're gonna distribute. Um, but then the second bullet point, if you have a two term complex number multiplied by another two term complex number, that's where you could FOIL. I guess you don't have to, you could distribute and then distribute twice the other way and do it like that. But that's more work, let's just FOIL. So, all right, first off, we got ones where we have to distribute. So number nine, number 10, we gotta use the distributive property and that's exactly what we're gonna do. So number nine, we're gonna have two i times five plus two i times three i, right? If we distribute the two i, that's where we end up. Okay, fine. Um, two i times five is gonna be 10 i, right? You can multiply the two and the five together. But then two i times three i, two times three is six, but i times i is i squared, okay? but i squared is negative one, right? Just by definition of, of what i is supposed to be, right? So, okay, fine. If i squared is negative one, I should be able to sub in negative one where the i squared is. So I'll 10i plus six times negative one. So this would be 10i plus negative six, or I guess 10i minus six, if you wanna write it like that. But conventionally, you wanna put the real part first, and it does say that, or it says it up here, put the answer in standard form. So that means we gotta put the negative six first. We'll have negative six plus 10i. That's the answer in standard form. Okay, uh, let's see about number 10 then. So if we distribute there, we're gonna have nine i times four minus nine i times one ninth. All right, nine i times four, nine times four is 36, that's 36 i. On the other side of the minus, um, nine times one ninth is one, and then i times i is i squared. So really this is just gonna be minus one i squared or minus i squared. Um, but like we said before, i squared is negative one. Just be careful with the signs here because we've got that subtraction. So it's actually gonna be minus negative one. So I guess just be careful with that. So we'll have 36 i, minus negative one, which would be the same thing as 36i plus one. And then we want it in standard form, so we want the real part first, which would be one plus 36i. All right, then multiplication where we're gonna FOIL. So that's what 11 and 12 are. And then there's some more of it on the next page too. But um, if you FOIL, like for 11, um, to multiply those together. And it looks like that's what you would do, right? I mean, it looks like both of those have two terms because they each have the real and imaginary parts. So it feels pretty natural to foil these out, I think. Um, but we'd have five times negative one and then plus five times four i for the outer, then plus negative two i times negative one for the inner, and then plus negative two i times four i for the last. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Five times negative one is negative five. Then five times four i is 20 i. Then negative two i times negative one is just gonna be plus two i. And then at the end, we're gonna have, well, I guess, plus a negative eight i squared, right? Since negative two times four is negative eight, and then i times i is i squared, all right. So what I'm gonna do is we got two terms with i's in them. I'm gonna combine those together. So negative five plus 22i, then minus eight i squared. Okay, look what happens. Got an i squared in it again. So i squared is negative one, and we can make that substitution and say we've got negative five plus 22i minus eight times negative one. So that's gonna be negative five plus 22i minus negative eight. Um, but minus negative eight is the same thing as plus eight, right? So negative five plus 22i plus eight. 
but then to combine like terms, negative 5 plus 8 is 3, so you get 3 plus 22i, and that's the answer. All right, 12, um, 12 will feel a bit longer just because of all those fractions, but basically we're going to do the same stuff. So what we're going to have with 12, so we're just going to FOIL it again. We'll have 1 third times 7 sixths. And then outer would be 1 third times negative 3 halves i. Then the inner would be 1 half i times 7 sixths. And then the last is 1 half i times negative 3 halves i. Okay, so let's see what we get. Um, 1 third times uh, 7 over 6. We're just going to have to multiply across with the numerators and denominators, so we'll get 7 over 18 for that one. Then the next one, uh, let's see, we'll have plus negative 1 half i, right? Since 3 halves times 1 third will be 3 over 6, which is 1 half. Or I guess mentally you could cancel out those 3s and just say, oh, you're left with 1 over 2. Either way, you'll get there. Um, the next one, that'll be plus 7 twelfths i. And then the last one will be plus negative 3 fourths i squared. Since 3 halves times 1 half will give you the 3 fourths i times i is i squared. I'm just going to rewrite this without the parentheses. So 7 eighteenths minus 1 half i plus 7 twelfths i, and then minus 3 fourths i squared. There are a couple of things that we can do here, um, or that we're going to have to do here, really. One of them is we have two terms with i's in them. We're going to want to combine those together. But in order to do that, we're going to need a common denominator, since we got fractions all over the place. The other thing is we have an i squared, and that's going to be negative 1. So I think in this next step, we can do both at the same time. The common denominator for the 1 half and the 7 halves would be a 12. So that means we can rewrite 1 half as 6 over 12. So minus 6 twelfths i, and then plus 7 twelfths i, and then we'll have minus 3 fourths times negative 1. All right, well then we can combine those i terms, and we'll have 7 eighteenths plus 1 twelfth i, and then plus 3 fourths from the negative 3 fourths times negative 1. All right, so now we got to combine the two real parts together, that 7 eighteenths and 3 fourths. So we need the common denominator there, which looks like it should be 36. Um, that would be the best one, right? That's the least common denominator. I guess if you don't see that right away, the product of the denominators always works as a common denominator, but it might not be the least common one. That's exactly what happens here. 18 times 4 is 72. You could use that, but you'll have to then simplify things down a little more at the end. Um, the least common denominator is 36. That's probably the best way to go. So to get there with the 7 18 we got to multiply by 2 over 2, and we get 14 over 36. And then I guess that 1 12th i is just going to stay there for now. And then for the 3 fourths, multiply by 9 over 9, you get 27 over 36. So then you could combine like terms with the two real parts, and 14 plus 27 is 41. So you get 41 over 36 plus 1 twelfth i. And that is the answer. So a little bit more intense because there are fractions, but ultimately we're doing the same thing. We're foiling, and um, we get that i squared term, or then we can say, well, i squared is negative 1. So ultimately that becomes a real term that we can then combine with the other real term eventually. Okay. Let's see. 13. Oh, 13 and 14 are the special products. All right. 13 is like when you square a binomial. And then 14 is multiplying two conjugates together. So with 13, I actually think that's easier just to write it out the long way first as 10 plus 3i times another 10 plus 3i, and then just FOIL that. And then you'd have, well, 10 times 10, right? And then plus 10 times 3i for the outer, and then 3i times 10 for the inner, and then 3i times 3i for the last. So that's 100 plus 30i 
plus another 30i, and then plus 9i squared. Um, but then, again, we got the i squared, so that'll be a negative 1. And we have the two i terms in the middle that we could combine together. So we'll have 100 plus 60i, if you combine those i terms, and then plus 9 times negative 1, since i squared is negative 1. So we're going to have 100 minus 9, right? So that'll be 91 plus 60i, and that's the answer. 14, um, so 14 involves conjugates. Watch what happens here. This is actually a pretty important thing. So you multiply these out. So we're going to have 9 times 9, and then plus 9 times negative 2i for the outer, plus 2i times 9, and then plus 2i times negative 2i. All right, 9 times 9 is 81, so we're going to have 81 minus 18i plus 18i, and then minus 4i squared. Looks like we're in the same place, right? We can combine the i terms, and we got the i squared. We can say it's a negative 1. We can go from there. Look at what the i terms actually are. They're additive inverses of each other, right? Negative 18 plus 18 is 0. So we're not going to have an imaginary part. We're going to have 81 minus 4 times negative 1, but that's 81 plus 4, which is 85. That's it, right? You just have a real number. That's really helpful for the next thing. So that's why this one's last, because it segues into how you do division, um, because when you're dividing, that's the move you want to end up with a real number in the denominator, and that's how you get it. So it's just like when we were talking about when you rationalize a denominator, um, which was a couple of sections ago, but um, when you rationalize a denominator with two terms, the thing that you did was multiply by the conjugate of the denominator, because then you end up with something that doesn't have any radicals in it, right? No more square roots. Um, it's the same kind of idea. If you have a denominator that has an i in it, then if you multiply um, that denominator by its conjugate, then you'll end up with something that just has a real number. Um, because what happens here is kind of what always happens. If you end up having to FOIL, then your two middle terms are going to add out, so your two i terms, um, and then you'll have a term with an i squared in it, and you just have to say, well, i squared is negative 1, and we're going to end up with a real number. And that's pretty much what happens with um, division. So complex conjugates, um, I guess I've said this word a whole bunch of times, but basically it's just, you know, A plus BI and A minus BI are conjugates of each other, right? It's just that one sign change. So why does this work out, or, or how does this work out generally? Um, well, A plus BI times A minus BI in general is A squared plus B squared. Um, usually you get a minus in between, like when we've done this before, like that's why I put the X plus 4 times X minus 4 in there. Um, when you have those conjugates, you end up with the difference of squares, right? So you have x squared minus 4 squared, and you get x squared equals, or x squared minus 16. Um, you still actually have that difference of squares. It's just like when there are i's involved, you still have that difference of squares. It's just that you end up with an i squared. And then if you say, well, that i squared is a negative 1, then multiplying by negative 1 is going to flip that sign around. So where I've got the x plus 4i times x minus 4i, yeah, that's a difference of squares. It's x squared minus 4i quantity squared, but 4i quantity squared you could rewrite as 4 squared times i squared, but then i squared is negative 1, so 16 times negative 1 is negative 16, and you end up with x squared minus negative 16, so x squared plus 16 at the very end, right? Okay, so how to divide by a complex number. So if necessary, um, which I don't think this will come up, um, like, I don't think this happens in the homework where you have to rewrite them in standard form. I think they're already set for that. But just in case, if they're not ready to go, put them in standard form first. Um, then what you do is you multiply the numerator and denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So this is the big step right here, number two. Um, once you got that done, you'll end up with a real number in the denominator, and then you can basically split your expression into a real part and an imaginary part, and then simplify and you're done. Um, the thing about this that feels weird is that doesn't feel like division. 
right? It feels like you're just kind of simplifying. Um, and that, that does feel a little unorthodox at first um, when you divide by a complex number. It doesn't feel like conventional division. Um, but basically, you're kind of manipulating the expression so that you're dividing by a real number instead. Um, so it is still division, even though, like, you know, if you take it at face value, it doesn't really look like division. It doesn't look like anything that you usually think of as being division, but um, it still works out, and it still really is division. It's just with complex numbers, you got to do things differently, I guess is really what it comes down to. So, all right, let's do some division. So 6 plus 5i divided by 3i. So I guess the first thing here is the conjugate. So the conjugate of 3i, that's negative 3i. Um, the easier way to view it might be, like if you think about 3i as being 0 plus 3i, right? Because there's no real part of that. And then if you just change the sign in the middle, instead of 0 plus 3i, you have 0 minus 3i. Most people would just call that minus 3i. So that's what we're going to do. So then what we're going to have is we're going to have, so we've got 6 plus 5i over 3i. And we're going to multiply by negative 3i over negative 3i. All right. So in the numerator, we're going to end up having to distribute. So I'm going to put that negative 3i up front just because it's easier for me to distribute left to right rather than right to left. So I'm going to write it like that. And then in the denominator, we're going to have 3i times negative 3i. Okay, so when we distribute, um, we're going to have negative 3i times 6, and then I guess plus negative 3i times 5i. And then that'll be over negative 9i squared. Okay. Um, so what we're going to have then is negative 18i minus 15i squared on top. And then on the bottom, negative 9i squared. Um, okay. Well, then those i squareds we could rewrite as negative 1s. So we could say well, this will be negative 18i minus 15 times negative 1 over negative 9 times negative 1. So then this will be negative 18i plus 15 over 9. Um, and then if we break this up into real and imaginary parts, the real part should go first. And it's not written that way now, but we could just make it go first and say, well, the 15 is the real part and on top, and then the negative 18i is the imaginary part. So I'm just going to rewrite this in the opposite order so the real part is going first. That way we'll end up with a final answer in standard form without having to do anything else. And so then we'll have minus 18i over 9. Um, that 15 ninths you could reduce a little bit. Um, since 15 and 9 are both divisible by 3, you could write that as 5 thirds. And then 18 divided by 9 is 2, so that's 5 thirds minus 2i. And that's the answer. All right. Uh, and then how about something like 18? We're in 18. We've got our complex number in the denominator, but it's one that has two terms. Okay, well, multiply the top and bottom by its conjugate. See what happens, right? So times 11 plus 2i over 11 plus 2i. And we're going to have 5 times 11 plus 2i over 11 squared minus 2i quantity squared. All right. So on top, we're going to distribute the 5. So we're going to have, I guess, 55 plus 10i when you do that. And then on the bottom, 11 squared is 121, and then that'll be minus 4i squared, right? Since 2 squared is 4, i squared is i squared. But, as usual, i squared showing up again, that's going to be a negative 1. All right? So we can deal with that and say on top, 
things are going to stay the way they are for the time being. And then on the bottom, we're going to have 121 minus 4 times negative 1. So that's 55 plus 10i over 121 plus 4. So 55 plus 10i over 125. And then we might as well go ahead and break that up into the real and imaginary parts and say now we're going to have 55 over 125. I lost the ability to write for a second. Um, let's see. That reset it. Okay. And then plus 10 over 125 times i. Um, so 55 and 125, both of those are divisible by 5. Um, so if you reduce that, you're going to get 11 over 25. And then same thing with 10 and 125, right? Numbers that end in 5s and zeros have to be divisible by 5. So for that one, you'll get 2 over 25 if you divide them both by 5. So 2 25ths times i, and that is the simplified final answer written in standard form. Okay, one more, and you know what it's going to be, even if you can't see the whole thing right now. It's going to be two-term complex number on the top and two-term complex number on the bottom. And that's what we've got. So we're going to take that thing, and we're going to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate of the bottom. So we're going to have 8 plus 3i over 1 plus 7i times... 1 minus 7i over 1 minus 7i. All right, and then looks like we're going to have to foil on top this time. So the top we're going to have 8 plus 3i times 1 minus 7i. And then on the bottom we should get the difference of squares. So 1 squared minus 7i quantity squared. So if we foil the top, that's going to be 8 minus 56i plus 3i minus 21i squared. And then on the bottom, that's going to be 1 minus 49i squared. But i squared, again, showing up in a couple of different spots now, right? Because it's in the numerator this time, too. Um, all right, well, I guess we could combine the minus 56i plus 3i into minus 53i, so we can do that. And then we'll say that that minus 21i squared will be minus 21 times negative 1. And then in the bottom, we're going to play the same game. We got another i squared, so we'll say that's also negative 1. All right, and then let's see. That means that what we're going to have is 8 minus 53i plus 21, since negative 21 times negative 1 will be positive 21. And then on the bottom, that's going to be 1 plus 49. So it looks like what we've got is 29 minus 53i over 50. And then we can rewrite that to where we have the real and imaginary parts. But I think this time that's as far as we're going. So we can write it that way, it's 29 over 50 minus 53 over 50 times i, but we can't really simplify those at all, because 29 is a prime number, so it won't share factors with 50, so we can't reduce that fraction. 53 is also a prime number, so that won't share any factors with 50, so we can't reduce that fraction. Um, and I intentionally made the numerators come out weird, because when I originally wrote 19, um, they both simplified, but they also both simplified in 18, right? Because we were able to simplify both of those by dividing the numerators and denominators by five. And I didn't want the exact same thing to happen twice, basically. So I made the numbers look, look weird in number 19. Like the 2953 seemed like unusual numbers, kind of. But um, they happen, right? And I figured it was better to have different stuff happen. So we got some weird, weird looking numbers that don't simplify. All right, so that I think should cover it for section 6.8. Um, the biggest thing is the division, I think, right? If you can do the division, you, you would have to be able to do the multiplication. 
right? Because you end up multiplying the top and bottom by the conjugate of the bottom. So if you can do the division, like you'd, you would have to be able to do the multiplication. So I think that's the biggest thing to focus on is dividing by a complex number. Um, I think if you can do that, um, you can probably do the whole section because the parts toward the beginning where you have to just simplify expressions that have square roots of negatives, we had to play that game before in chapter seven, right? So that part's probably, um, even if you don't remember it exactly, it's probably still pretty familiar. And then when you see it, you go, oh yeah, right, that's what you do. Um, but the division, like that's new and that's different and it feels a little weird at first if you've never done it before. But if you can do the division, you can do the multiplication, I think that would take care of the whole section. Um, so that I think is the, the thing that, uh, that's the key, right? Um, focus on the division and then you'd be able to do everything.